Item number SCP-346 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-346 is to be kept in a store bought cage at least 1 meter in height and 1.5 meters in width either way. No locks or additional security measures are required as SCP-346 is no stronger nor smarter than the average parakeet. SCP-346's cage is to contain at least two water dishes with standing perches to be fulfilled daily and fed a diet of five to six medium-sized live crickets daily. SCP-346's cage also contains one tree branch for perching, scratching, and climbing, one open-top nest purchased at a commercial pet store lined with moss, and a string with bright colored bells on it for entertainment. The bottom of SCP-346's cage is covered with a corncock base by degradable bedding and is to be cleaned out and replaced every other week. During cleaning, SCP-346 may be either held by hand, allowed to fly around the room with a closed door, or placed in a paper bag with a book over the end to be held out of the way. SCP-346's cage is held in Dr. Wright's office and may not be removed without her permission. Despite SCP-346's habit of nibbling fingertips and pulling strands of hair, SCP-346 poses no danger upon escape and may be recaptured gently with either net or by hand. Description SCP-346 is a small member of an unidentified family of Pterodactyl. SCP-346 is approximately the size of a small bat and has very lightweight bone structure. Although its head, wings, and legs are bare, its main body is covered with a soft coat of fur-like dark-colored down. The origin of SCP-346 is unknown and was purchased by Agent Beep in a small pet shop in Brazil, being marketed under the name Congomato. The owner of the pet store claims not to know where SCP-346 came from, having purchased a set of eggs off the black market, of which only one SCP-346 hatched, believing them to be from a rare species of parrot. Some theories suggest that there may have been a large colony of creatures similar to SCP-346 somewhere in South America. Testing has revealed that SCP-346 is an adult, but appears to have its growth somewhat stunted by malnutrition and being raised in a small crabbed cage. SCP-346 is also a male and has been nicknamed by staff to find the little creature's appearance charming as Terry. SCP-346 behaves in a manner similar to birds and bats, being most active at dawn and dusk, and energetically flying in whatever space it's given, snapping up insects either out of the air or off the ground in branches. SCP-346 chirps and squeaks in a manner similar to birds and rodents, and is most vocal during the evening hours. Some describe this as endearing, others as annoying. Addendum 1. After the discovery of SCP-1265, some theories suggest there may have been a large colony of creatures similar to SCP-346 somewhere in South America. However, the existence of SCP-346 implies that these alleged colonies, should they exist, do not possess the same anonymous properties as SCP-1265. Addendum 2. It has been suggested that further investigation into the origins of SCP-346 be taken in the hopes of finding a large colony of similar creatures, perhaps indicative of a surviving member of the pterodactyl lineage or up in space and time. SCP-346 should be kept well away from Josie as per request of Dr. Wright. Item number SCP-634 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-634 is to be kept in a 34.85 liter tank in the center of 
a 10 by 10 meter room. The tank shall include a filtration device, an aerator, a heater set to maintain a constant temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, and an automatic feeder set to dispense 10 milliliters of standard goldfish food twice a day. Tank and water room will have posted message, do not put hands inside tank at regular spaced intervals. A team of no fewer than 3D class personnel shall be assigned to weekly replace 50% of the tank's water and clean tank as needed. Team will be provided with constant oral instructions over the intercom system. On alternating weeks, team will provide SCP-634 with 12 grams of uncooked meat. Description: SCP-634 has the appearance of a male common goldfish of full maturity, approximately 7 centimeters in length. SCP-634 was discovered in 20 Beep in Beep, Connecticut. It was housed in a two-gallon round glass tank placed on the passenger seat of a car. SCP-634 came to the Foundation's attention when a waitress in a nearby diner noticed that the car has been parked with its emergency lights on for several hours, apparently out of gasoline, with a driver who attempted to start the car approximately once every 90 seconds. She also reported that the officer sent to investigate it had been repeating his walk from his police car to the disabled car and back for more than an hour. SCP-634 was removed from the scene by agents operating under constant prompting by a team leader who maintained a minimum distance of 5 meters from the object at all times. Upon removal of SCP-634, behavior of the driver and officer returned to normal. Officer expressed confusion over what had happened, but otherwise was shown to have no lasting effects. Driver complained of burning sensation in right hand. He was treated for mild dehydration and loss of flesh on the first two carpals of his right index and middle fingers. Due to the effects of SCP-634, driver and officer were released after being treated and given cover stories. SCP-634 was traced to a local pet store, Beep, where the driver had left his wallet. The goldfish in said store were examined and determined to be no threat, but were terminated as precautionary measure. Efforts to trace the origins of the shipment containing SCP-634 has thus far proved futile. SCP-634 affects the short-term memory and attention span of living creatures in close proximity to it. The strength of SCP-634's ability appears to be inversely related to the squared distance from SCP-634, with negligible results after a radius of approximately 3.1 meters. The only noticeable anatomical difference between SCP-634 and a common goldfish is its small row of sharp teeth. SCP-634's bite has a coagulating effect which minimizes blood loss. It also causes a burning sensation at the point of incision. SCP-634 does not appear to have any further ability to influence a person's mind or otherwise influence them to initially put a hand in its tank. Its adaptation is generally suited for use in an area with predators who would naturally be compelled to reach for it. Also note that SCP-634 does not influence a person or animal's natural instincts or wants, only affecting their memory at the current context of a situation. Because of this, SCP-634 would be unlikely to stop a rampage of an SCP which has a general inclination towards violence and a dislike of people, as those behaviors would continue regardless of context. SCP-634 may be effective in reducing the damage done by a sentient SCP who has been provoked. Addendum SCP-634-1 See Experiment Log SCP-634 for further details. Experiment Log 634 Experiment A Subject D. Beep Subject instructed to feed SCP-634 
Subject enters room and approaches SCP-634. 24 seconds. Subject reaches SCP-634. Subject appears momentarily confused. Subject looks at fish food, not head. 53 seconds. Subject gives SCP-634 one serving of fish food. 1 minute 24 seconds, SCP-634 finishes eating food. 1 minute 33 seconds, Subject expresses confusion over what he is supposed to be doing. 1 minute 43 seconds, Subject looks at fish food, not head. 1 minute 35 seconds, Subject gives SCP-634 one serving of fish food. 2 minutes 16 seconds, SCP-634 finishes eating food. 2 minutes 23 seconds. Subject expresses confusion over what he is supposed to be doing. 2 minutes 41 seconds. Subject looks at fish food, not head. 2 minutes 58 seconds. Subject gives SCP-634 one serving of fish food. 3 minutes 36 seconds. SCP-634 finishes eating food. 3 minutes 42 seconds. Subject expresses confusion over what he is supposed to be doing. Pattern repeats approximately every 70 seconds for the next 22 minutes. Experiment halted when DB ran out of fish food. SCP-634 shows no signs of discomfort or injury due to the large amount of food eaten. Subject showed no lasting effects of experiment. Subject kept one month for psychological testing, showing no other signs of memory loss or impairment. Experiment B. Subject DB. Subject instructed to place hand in SCP-634's tank. Subject enters room and approaches SCP-634. 15 seconds. Subject becomes mildly confused at a distance of 1.5 meters from SCP-634. Pauses to check his pockets, shrugs, and continues to approach. 32 seconds. Subject reaches SCP-634. Confusion increases. Ask what he is supposed to do. Subject prompted to place hand into tank. 1 minute and 4 seconds. Subject places right hand into tank. 1 minute 45 seconds. SCP-634 bites subject's index finger. Subject curses. Removes hand from tank. 2 minute 12 seconds. Subject complains of burning sensation in finger. 2 minutes 30 seconds. Subject places right hand into tank. Appears to feel a decrease in pain. 2 minutes 55 seconds. SCP-634 bites subject's index finger. Subject curses and removes hand from tank. 3 minutes 23 seconds. Subject complains of burning sensation in finger. 3 minutes 48 seconds. Subject places right hand into tank. Appears to feel a decrease in pain. 4 minutes and 8 seconds. SCP-634 bites subject's index finger. Subject curses removes hand from tank. Pattern repeats approximately every 90 seconds for the next 20 minutes. 25 minutes. Subject instructed to leave. Subject walks towards door. 25 minutes 16 seconds. Subject reaches a distance of 2 meters from SCP-634. Pauses. Audibly recalls that he was supposed to go to do something to SCP-634 and turns to approach SCP-634. 25 minutes, 32 seconds. Subject again prompted to leave. Subject continues to be prompted until he reaches door. Subject treated for injury to hand. Subject expresses confusion over why he would continue to repeatedly put hand in the tank when the fish kept biting him, but otherwise showed no lasting effects. Subject kept one month for psychological testing, showing no other signs of memory loss or impairment. Addendum SCP-634-2 Considering the average lifespan of the common goldfish and SCP-634's unique abilities, it may be advisable to introduce a female goldfish for breeding purposes.